Hi, I'm Jono, and if you're new here, I do pencil drawings. Every now and then I'll get a message from someone saying that my work has either inspired them or gotten them to pick up a pencil and start drawing or just kind of help them keep going. And it's so incredibly heartwarming to receive messages like that. So in this video, I thought I'd maybe just share a list of some artists who have done the same for me over the years. So whether it's conceptually or technically, or maybe just their work ethic, these are some artists that have really inspired me. Also a huge thank you to Squarespace once again for sponsoring this video. So the first artist that's really inspired me over the last couple of years is Miles Johnson. He's an English artist. I think he's actually a similar age to me, maybe even younger than I am. And he just has this incredible way of getting imagery from his imagination onto the paper, which I really admire. So in my own practice, I'm still quite bound by the references, which is why I have such an extensive process of taking reference photos. But Miles, he's studied um, figure drawing extensively and he's got this huge knowledge of anatomy and gesture. Um, so he's quite an academic in that sense, and I really admire that a lot. Um, I feel like those are some of my, my weak points, actually. So seeing someone like Miles just really execute that so well is immensely inspiring for me. So he does still use references, but very loosely. So he'll often just take a picture of his own face from a specific angle and use that to, to draw any, you know, the expressions or whatever he needs to from that, and then just manipulate that in the most incredible ways, playing with perspective and light. Here are some examples of Miles's work. You can see here, these are just some of his planning sketches, which in themselves are just absolutely wonderful. So yeah, huge inspiration. This guy's on another level. I absolutely love his work. So the next artist that's really been inspiring me over the years is Jeremy Geddes. I think that's how you pronounce his last name, I'm not entirely sure, but his Instagram handle is Jeremy is painting. And I feel like Jeremy has been dipping out of the same kind of creative world that I've been dipping out of. I'll have this concept that will come up in my head and either like a week later or a couple of days later, I'll see that he's somehow just like perfectly nailed it and just, you know, taken that similar, like, I don't know what you call it, but like a similar concept that might be floating around in the ether, and he's just depicted it in this incredible way, marrying realism and surrealism in such a beautiful way, which is something that I really, really love doing as well. So seeing someone just execute that so well, especially in the medium, which I really admire, which is oil painting, um, he's a huge inspiration to me. We also both have these small little uh, fascinations with similar motifs like birds, for example, which we both like to include in our works. But yeah, his works are absolutely incredible. The next artist who's inspired me not only conceptually, but also with their work ethic and how prolific they are is Kit King. She's a Canadian artist who works mostly in oil and she uses a dry brush technique which is quite similar to dry medium, so like charcoal or, or pencil, so there's a, a kinship there. But her subject choice and subject matter is really, really interesting for me. She likes to play around with the trompe l'oeil kind of effect. She often tries to trick the eye by using shadows and um, trick the, the viewer into thinking that maybe the actual paper or fabric of the artwork has been um, damaged or torn. Some works she actually does physically um, damage. So there's one piece that she hit the artwork with a hammer um, and created this violence or this damage to the artwork. Other pieces she actually just renders it in a way that makes it look like it's been torn up and so she's often playing with, with viewers in that way and I really I love that as well as just her realism, attention to detail is absolutely insane. And then also her scale, she works on these huge artworks which I, I absolutely love doing as well. Um, although she works on much larger scale than what I do so I'm kind of aspiring to to get there one day. But yeah, she's also very present and she really engages her audience on social media and she's very accessible to people reaching out to her, which I also really admire and really respect. So um, that's yeah, an artist who I admire not only technically, but also in her work ethic and also in her, her way of being so available to people who admire her work. The next artist who's probably been one of the biggest inspirations in my, in my work is Erna Dry and uh, she's my mom and she's 
Absolutely incredible. She basically represents a lot of the things which I really struggle with and I would really love to get better at. She's this multi-talented, you know, multi-mediumed artist. So she originally was working in ceramics for many years and had a love for painting. So she painted quite often and had this base level skill or foundation of drawing, um, which she used obviously in her ceramics and stuff. And she just has this way of experimenting and playing, which I constantly try and bring myself back to as well in my own practice and kind of have on this pedestal to, to always almost guide me. So I, I love that she is free to work in so many different mediums. She also, she enjoys realism, but she isn't bound by realism, which I can get sometimes. Um, she's got this freeness and rawness to her strokes. So often she'll just let the process guide her. And that's something I really, really admire about the way that she works. Um, and then also just her subject choice. She's got this sense of humor, which I absolutely love that comes through in her works. There's juxtapositions that are really playful and um, sometimes really ominous and creepy, which I really love as well. You'll see with one of the, the other artists that have inspired me, there's a macabreness to it, which, which I think is great. I think not taking yourself too seriously, but also being able to explore really dark spaces is important. And I think my mom has a beautiful way of doing that. She's also the most humble human and having that as a role model, I think is uh, really, really special for me. And uh, yeah, I've been incredibly inspired by her in multiple facets of my career. The next artist on my list is Kelvin Akafo. He is a British hyperrealistic artist. So obviously the, the hyperrealism really, I'm, I'm drawn to that because that's part of my practice as well. But the thing about Kelvin's work, which for me stands out is his perfection. He has extremely detailed artworks, which often when people are zoning in on the hyperrealistic aspects of a drawing or an artwork, you the way that it comes out, the way that it's rendered, we focus in on the imperfections because those are these small little details and quirks which make something interesting. Calvin does the same thing, he draws imperfections and pores and you know scars and, and all of that, but he has a way of making those imperfections still perfect. So when the way he draws hair, he's drawing messy, completely, you know, ruffled hair or whatever it might be, and somehow it just comes across as this perfect rendering of whatever that that um texture that he's trying to do. So the thing I really love about Calvin's work and something that I try to just aspire to is the, the extremely clean, perfect look of Calvin's work. And, and then the last artist on this list, which is possibly my favorite artist of, of all time, is um, Zadislaw Bixinski, who's a, a Polish um, surrealistic painter he specializes in these like dystopian landscapes which are very like almost hellish kind of landscapes it's actually just absolutely incredible he plays with perspective and you feel so small as the viewer of of his works his work is incredibly creepy and dark and ominous and macabre um, he draws these like gnarled fingers and, and knuckles and just this mess of detail obviously which i'm also really attracted to but he he also has these like cobwebs and spider webs over things which are so emotive and absolutely incredible and i'm i'm actually i'm afraid of spiders so there's something in that for me which is this like almost like a sore tooth which i you know creeps me out to look at it but i can't stop looking at it um and it almost he he captures this kind of like darkness of the psyche in his works so at least that's that's for me something that that resonates Something for me that I admire is he's unapologetic in his subject choice. He, he's drawing things which are really difficult to look at. And there's this carefreeness almost, or like it feels like he's not afraid of judgment or he's just kind of drawing what is coming to him. It seems like this very raw and pure um, expression and creativity, which in his case has come out as quite dark, macabre work. But I just, yeah, I really, really admire it. He is an absolute role model for me. Um, just with his subject choice and concepts and uh, understanding of perspective and what an absolutely incredible artist. Before I end this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. I've been working with them for quite a couple of years and they've played a crucial role in my career, not only with helping these videos out and sponsoring this channel to a, a large degree, but early on in my career, they provided a really easy platform for me to put my work out there and create a really easy portfolio. It's so essential for any creatives looking to start a, a career 
to have an online portfolio and to make it easy for clients to get in touch with you. And for me, I felt that Squarespace did that effortlessly. I never had to patch or upgrade anything. I could register a domain with them or set up an online store. And most importantly, I could design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also, every time I got stuck, their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're looking at building a website, give Squarespace a try. And if you decide that you love them, use this offer code and get 10% off your first purchase. There we go. I hope you guys found this video interesting. These artists have played different roles in inspiring my career and inspiring my work. I read through the comments as much as possible. So let me know there if there's artists that have inspired you that you'd like to share with me. Um, or even if you just share some of the similar ones that have inspired me as well. It's, it's really cool to know that um, other people kind of draw from the same you know sources of inspiration or, or whatever that might be but yeah as always thanks for the support i'll see you guys in the next one bye